CataractCoach.com. Do you know how to convert from FACO to manual extra capsular extraction? There are cases where you will have to know this to save your case. So here's the patient. You see a dense nucleus stained with tripan blue dye. The resin is going to create a rexus. Now I'll tell you in advance, this patient's hyperopic. You're going to put in a higher power IOL, like 26, 27 diopters. This patient has a smaller anterior segment. The white to white is smaller. That dilation is only about five millimeters or so. And the resident is making too small of a capsular rexus. So in this case, you want that rexus to be much bigger. I want that rexus to be much bigger than that. That's probably four and a half millimeters at best. So grooving a central trench here in the nucleus. And again, you'll appreciate this at the end, just how small this rexus is. Just keep in mind, it's a small anterior segment. And we gotta get this big nucleus out of there. So doing the groove, the case looks pretty reasonable. But when we fast forward here, you're gonna notice an ominous sign. And that sign is, there's gonna be a gap trying to split the nucleus, but there's a gap now between the iris and the blue stained anterior lens capsule. So now trying a chop technique, don't know if that's successful, that looked reasonable, reasonable, but still it looks a little odd here. There's a gap between that iris and the lens capsule. So let's see if we can bring the nucleus up, split it up a little bit, do something else. Here, of course, some the attending is helping the resident out, but there's still an ominous sign here. We try to bring the nucleus up and it just doesn't look good. Fake a probe one more time just to even try something. And again, there's a gap between the iris and the lens capsule. What does that tell you? The posterior capsule is ruptured, it's open. Don't know exactly where it happened. We studied the video, but no question that lens capsule is open. So we can try split this nucleus, but probably the better part of judgment, when, see how the mobility of that nucleus is so high? The better part of judgment is here is, let's just get that nucleus out of the eye. Enough's enough, let's not let it go back. So putting viscoelastic, dispersive viscoelastic to help support that nucleus, abandon the main incision. You cannot use the main incision in order to do an extra cap extraction. You cannot enlarge the corneal incision to this width. So abandon the main incision and make now a scleral tunnel. And this is made in that SICS technique. And you can see we make it sufficiently wide. And now we can enter the AC. And again, now this is a sufficiently wide incision so we can extract that nucleus. And that incision is gonna seal very well. Here comes a lens loop going under the nucleus and we'll try to push that nucleus out of the eye. Now the nucleus was already grooved, so it's gonna split apart on us. That's okay, use plenty of viscoelastic, protect the cornea, protect the remaining capsular tissue in the iris, and let's get that lens out of the eye, pushing it out, okay. So you remove the lens nucleus from the eye, a little bit left, again, we'll spend more time taking that last piece out. Here's the last half of the lens nucleus. Again, being very careful not to damage the iris. Here we got a little bit of iris prolapse, so there's the rest of it coming out. There's the iris prolapse. So now nucleus has been fully removed. Let's put some viscoelastic, push that back in the eye. Now with the eye full of viscoelastic, it'll be a lot easier. We can go ahead and suture up that main incision. So get the nucleus out of there and put a suture in to close that main incision. And now you can actually go back and remove the remaining lens cortex or whatever material is left there and we'll examine what's the extent of the capsular bag. Is there sufficient support left? What happened? Where did we break the bag? We'll try to determine all of that. So one nice suture going in here. That looks very good. Getting that nucleus out of the way. And this suture can be tied up. So in this case, certainly we're gonna to try to put in a sulcus lens. I think that'll be the best option for this patient. Hopefully we have sufficient support for that. And um, cleaning up any uh, cortex is our next step. So we put that in, in suture in, and you can now use a bimanual approach. We can use a bimanual um, approach for the vitrectomy, but first let's use the phaco probe, get some of these larger uh, pieces out. These are softer, epinuclear shell. There's real no nucleus left there. And again, be careful if there's vitreous prolapse, you wanna avoid that situation. So here you can use the IA probe trying to use the IA probe to clean up any lens of material that's there. 
but you may soon find yourself dealing with vitreous. So listen carefully. The key here, if you use an IA probe, is listen for the ding, 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 ding. That sound is on most machines, the sound of occlusion. It means the probe is being occluded with lens material. So there for sure you can see there's a break in the capsule. There's certainly some vitreous coming through and luckily no aspirating vitreous yet, but being super careful. We set our settings very low as well. We don't want to leave this cortex in the eye. I've seen some, some residents who have a capsule break and they end up leaving a tremendous amount of cortex in the eye. You do not want to do that. Now, you can also remove this lens cortex with the bimanual vitrectomy setup, but in this case, we're actually very fortunate. We don't have the uh, vitreous prolapsing too much in the anterior segment, so we're not putting any vitreous traction. And I'll show you this. We'll clean all that up in due time. Now, at this point, we've got to ask our technician to set up the anterior vitrector. And remember, the anterior vitrector, we've got two different options here. You have IA cut, which is position one is irrigation, position two is aspiration, and three is cut. IA cut is to help remove any lens cortex that remains, but don't use the cutter and don't cut the capsule. The other mode is anterior vitrectomy. So position one is irrigation, two is the cutter, and then three is aspiration. That helps avoid putting any traction on the vitreous because you want to avoid that. Just remember, by having a ruptured posterior capsule, you've already increased the risk of endophthalmitis by many fold. You've increased the risk of retinal detachment, increased the risk of um, macular edema. And so you need to be very careful in these cases. So cleaning up what's remaining of the material, this is the bimanual vitrector. And again, you use your judgment to decide if you don't have any prolapse vitreous, well, then you can use this in IA cut mode like we're doing now. If you're afraid that you don't have the foot control during IA cut to avoid inadvertently engaging position, engaging position three and engaging the cutter and damaging the capsule, you can actually just use these two same instruments and on the machine, hit the word cortex and you can be back in your cortex mode. Now I'd change some of the settings. I'd put a higher infusion because this is less infusion with that just 23 gauge infusion port. And I'd decrease the aspiration flow rate if you're gonna use your cortex settings. But I think you can learn to control your foot and do a good job. Now, cleaning that up, it looks pretty good. You can tell there's vitreous prolapse. Here comes some triamcinolone. You definitely want to do this. And surprisingly, not a whole lot of staining in the anterior segment. So doing IA cut mode again to remove any of this lens material, you want to get that stuff and make sure it doesn't fall back into the vitreous. All of these patients where you do have a complication like this, you have to examine their retinas very carefully in the post-op period and monitor and I'm telling you, this patient can still have a beautiful outcome, and the patient can have a very great visual result. So here's more triamcinolone, making sure there's nothing left there. And I'm using the chopper and looking around. Let's find out, is there sufficient capsule support? So I think there is sufficient capsule support to get in a sulcus lens. And I think also there's really not much in terms of residual lens cortex remaining. So we'll fill up that sulcus with just a little bit of viscoelastic. Don't hu inject huge amounts of viscoelastic because it's just going to go back into the vitreous cavity after you've done that big vitrectomy there in the anterior hyaloid face. So at this point, we can cut that suture out. And you don't have to use a lens injector. This lens, this three-piece lens, can just go right in the eye. You have a big enough incision. So let's fill up the anterior chamber with our cohesive viscoelastic. Here comes that three-piece lens going in correctly in the anti-S orientation. And that can be just carefully dialed into the sulcus. There's one haptic in. And see if we can get the other haptic going in. And I appreciate you watching this whole video. I know it's long, but I, I did speed it up. I wanted to just show you this takes a long time. The actual video, unedited, is about an hour in length. So maybe 50, 55 minutes. And so this is not a fast procedure. This takes time. So there's that trailing haptic being dialed in. As, can we get that in? Not quite yet. So maybe uh, rotate a little bit more. You can see I'm giving instruction here so the resin can learn how to do this. You have to be able to learn how to do this to salvage your case. If this happens in the future, you have to be able to rescue it. Now, that looks great. Lens is in the sulcus now. Let's get that thing centered up. And perhaps it can be captured behind the capsorexis. Let's see what we have here in terms of support. So again, now just making sure the haptics are in the right position. You got to make sure both haptics are there above the anterior lens capsule. You definitely want to avoid that. So you can see how much time it takes us to manipulate and get that, that trailing haptic in the right position. So we can try forceps. No, let's pull one, four, one, one out of the eye. Now 
Let's try and get the other one where we want it. And you need to spend this time to make sure it ends up the way you want it. Now that's much better. Now I'm happy with the amount of support that we have there. There's no vitreous left in the anterior segment. That looks beautiful. The lens is in appropriate, appropriate position. Here, suturing up that main incision now. Prior to removing the viscoelastic, it's much easier to suture that incision with the whole anterior chamber full of viscoelastic. So tying that up, this resident has obviously done a good job of practicing suturing, and that looks pretty good. At this point, we need to remove the viscoelastic, and then we'll complete the case here. And so I'm happy to say the patient had a very nice outcome and was very pleased with the visual results. Unfortunately, in the post-op period, there were no further complications. Now notice to remove the viscoelastic, we're just using the bimanual anti-vitrectomy instruments. You can put it on viscoelastic removal on the machine, but just make sure you decrease the flow rate. Here, a last check with more triamcinolone just to be sure. And that looks great. Now, there's a little viscoelastic, maybe a little bit of heme stuck it to the posterior aspect of the lens. That's really of no consequence. That's that slight opacity you see there in the center of the optic. That'll be gone before you know it. And so we don't worry about that. The main incision is sealed nicely. You can see it doesn't require suture. So now just placing a suture to close the conjunctiva, and we'll call this case quits. So good job for this patient. Good job for this resident surgeon. This is a tough lesson to learn. It's not easy. But, you know, there are times for every surgeon where you just can't predict things and you may have to convert your FACO to a manual extra capsule or cataract extraction. And you need to be able to know how to do it on the fly. And keeping your patient comfortable, make sure the patient has enough anesthesia and you can have a pretty good outcome. Thank you for watching.